praise the Lord. Praise and glory be to Jesus. It's a privilege, uh, God's people, once again, to come before you and uh, seek the voice of God for us all. I need to hear as uh, you need to hear here. And the Spirit of God is wonderful. He is a great counselor, and he is a comforter, and he is the one who is the revealer. And uh, because I would not trust these uh, uh, 12 uh, mostly fishermen to write something for me about my Lord. I would not trust in their memory. But praise God, I didn't have to trust in their memory. Because the Lord said, when the Holy Spirit will come, he will remind you of the things. You will not be able to forget it. Holy Spirit will remind you. So all these four gospel, I believe, were not out of the memory of these men. Uh, they, were, they were four uh, writers of the gospel, but actually the writer, we believe, is the Holy Spirit. He is the one who reminded them the right words. Every, every, every gospel, of course, uh, speaks about our Lord from a different viewpoint. Uh, the figure is so wonderful. If you read in the presence of God in Ezekiel, we see four kind of, uh, we see uh, a kind of creature that have got four, four faces. They are called cherub, and Lucifer was one of the cherub. That's why he wants to have the kingdom. That's why it's uh, one of the one of the face of this cherub is lion. And uh, these four gospels speak speak about these four four figures of our Lord Jesus. Uh, and first, we see the Gospel of Matthew. They were written to the Jewish people, and if you look very carefully. Jesus is depicted in this, uh, in this gospel as the king. He sets up his rule, the Sermon on the Mount, and the other, the authority that he used, the authority over every element. In fact, he was the real king. And King Herod wanted to see him, but this king of king said it loudly and clearly, audience is denied. I'm not going to give you a chance. Of course, he get, got the chance, but that was too late. Jesus has already drunk the cup for the sin of the world, and he would not speak a word to him. He wanted to hear something, but he would not. And then we come to the, the Gospel of Mark. God's people, Gospel of Mark speaks about another face of the church. And that is the face of an ox. Ox is a laboring, laboring animal. And it's also for the sacrifice. So it speaks about the priesthood. It speaks about, about Jesus as a servant. And you see, there will be seen no genealogy in, in the book of Mark. Why? Because nobody wants to express the genealogy of the servant. He's a servant there, and one word you will see it repeated over and over again immediately. Immediately, it is written over and over again. And then we come to the uh, come to the Gospel of Luke, and here is a man, compassionate man. You read the uh, and Holy Spirit wrote it from a from a from a specific angle, and that was he is a man. And then we come to the book of John. And I tell you, it's absolutely a different way the Holy Spirit caused John to write. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created by him. So Jesus is presented in this gospel as God. He is God. He is one with God. I and my Father are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Philip's haven't you seen me? And then he said it so clearly. He who has seen me has seen the Father. God's people, this is what I wanted to say. Holy Spirit is in you. He is around you. He is sent to have fellowship with us. It's good to give heed to him. 
it's good to be conscious of him. Instead of being too much of people conscious, it's good to come in his presence uh, regularly and as long as you have can manage and let him speak to you. Let him have deep fellowship with you, intimate fellowship with you. Another thing before I come to this message uh, that is on my heart and I want to speak to you. Another thing I want to say uh, here, it was in my heart and last night I woke up at about three o'clock and I began to write it down and I just wanted to give a glimpse of what the Bible speaks about, uh, about healing, wholeness. Why do you say, uh, do you want to talk about this? Because the whole world is in the grip of a plague. Uh, it's, uh, it's a plague all over the world. And uh, many, of, uh, many of God's people have experienced it. Uh, the one who calls me on the radio, they experienced it. And then in our own group, uh, Brother Ravi and the family had a terrible time with this uh, corona. And uh, they suffered a lot, but the Lord spared them. And you can see now the, uh, the rate of survival among, my, among God's people I have known is 100% uh, recovery, 100% recovery. So shall we worry, shall we be worried? <laughs> no, it's about 100% recovery. And the vaccine has got 94. I'm not sure about this, uh, but God's people, this pandemic is here. The sickness is here. The world is in the grip, grip of sickness. What does the Bible say about this? Let me tell very clearly. A certainty about what I'm saying is in the Bible. First of all, God is called our God. I'm not talking about other gods. I'm not talking about the God of the other religion. I'm talking about our Father. I'm talking about the one who sent Jesus Christ in the world to die for the sin of the world. He is called physician. He is called Jehovah Rapha. That means a physician. And God is not like the physician. Uh, you go to the surgery and, uh, and one of the doctor in Coventry was, he would first word, what, what do you want? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't like it, but I could change him. That's it. And uh, so God is not a physician like these physicians who don't want to be your friend. And in fact, they are afraid of you, many of them, because of the compensation culture. And uh, they say, what do you want? And you say, I want aspirin. And they won't, they won't challenge you. They will not, uh, they will not, most of the time, they will not uh, have any, any quarrel with you. They say, have an aspirin. And if you, if you want anything else, they will give you. And then it's up to you then. So our God, first of all, is a God who is called physician. His name is Jehovah Rapha. So physician God will seek to heal you. The physician God simply says, stay under the shadow of the Almighty. And so this is the first thing we need to remember. If you come to the book of... Uh, uh, book of uh, Leviticus, God says, you will serve me and I will drive sickness out of you. So God's people seek to worship him. Actual word is worship me. And worship simply mean worship. How much worth do you have for me? How much do you value me? That's, that's what worship means. Worship is not singing song only. Well, you can sing songs only in the spirit and that can be worship but the worship is from this word worship you have got fellowship with the lord and how much do you value him how much value does he hold in your life how much uh, how much priority he has got does he hold first priority or second priority or third priority whatever uh, you hold Dear, God must be above this. So God says, you worship me. I will see how much priority do you give me. I will see how much you love me. I will see how much you give me uh, for your time, your energy, your everything. 
is it mine or is it your to decide uh, what to do? So God's people worship is another thing that will cause us to be free from sickness. That's the great news. If anyone is hearing and he doesn't know the Lord yet, I would simply counsel you in the Lord, get to know the Lord, get to, get to be acquainted with him. How much worth do you have of God in your heart? How much value does he hold? What position does he, uh, does he have in your life? Is he number one or is he number another number? I tell you God's people, he won't, uh, he won't like second, second class number. He, he says simply, I'm God and there is no one, no one after me. Praise God. So this, another idea that is certainty about our deliverance from sickness is here. And then I was thinking about it and I begin to, begin to think of the work done, the work finished. Healing work among the people of God is already accomplished. It is a done deed. How do I know? Because in Isaiah 53, in very simple terms, in very simple words, it is written very clearly that he bore our diseases. That is what it means. Now, it's a logical thing to think that if he has borne my disease, why should I be bearing it? That's the question. It's a very simple question. There's no, no condition here. He bore our diseases. He took it on his own body. And when we come to the New Testament in chapter 8 and verse 16, we read about it that he fulfilled it. Bible says that when the evening came, all these people came around Jesus and he healed them all. I mean, he healed them all. And that is our God. We can take comfort in this, that we can see healing in the midst of this turmoil as a done deed. The Lord has already done and God's people, those who are hearing, if you do not know this Lord, this is a wonderful God. He is a healing God. He is a delivering God. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He paid the penalty for your sin and for your sicknesses. He was stripped, he was smitten and stricken. Now, I was thinking, again, it's the last point I'm going to make, and then we will come to this little word I have got in my heart I want to share with you. Uh, it is, why then the sickness trouble people of God? Why does this affliction come on the people of God? When God is a healing God, when he says, you worship me and I will drive our sickness out of you, when he says simply that by my stripe you are healed, and uh, it is fact. These are all the statement of facts and God spoke these things. God accomplished. Why does the why does still sickness prevail in the lives of the people of God? I'm not sure about you, but I can give my idea what I think. I think the only way the sickness can be justified in the life of the people of God is if the Son of God, uh, I mean, I personally, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the begotten, but I am the Son of God because of him. When the Father sees some thing done. When the Father sees something need to be accomplished and he wants my attention, I tell you, he can allow the sickness to be there. For example, in the book of Job, Job had some things that were hidden and God wanted to bring some pressure and that pressure brought uh, those, those things out. And he said few things that he, uh, he did not say before. But when the pressure came, 
in the life of, of Job, then he said some, some things that he was sorry for them. And then he says in the end, I abhor myself. As a man, man is born in sin. Man is born in sin nature. Man is born a sinner. He doesn't become sinner by sinning. He is sinner by nature. So God's people, when all is done, and when he has suffered according to, according to the permission of God, when he has done all the suffering, and it was a terrible suffering, God recovered him and blessed him double. Double. Uh, only the children were not doubled because he already had 10 children gone into eternity. And the rest were again, they were double again, the same number of children he had and he had a great life. So God's people, God's desire for us is good. He's a good God. I believe sometime he wants my attention. Uh, what do you mean you say? He wants me to go deeper. He wants me to think deeper. And he wants me to question when some kind of sickness or weakness comes. I believe the Lord wants me to say, Lord, what do you want to say? What are you trying to say to me? So I would say it is uh, to take our attention. Uh, God says so clearly, whom he loves, he also chastises. Whom he loves, whom he makes son, he also uh, also chastises, instructs. I believe it can be instruction. So this is what I believe in the people of God. But still, God knows. Many mighty men of God, women of God, did mighty miracles and they died in sickness. I'm not questioning them. I'm not challenging them. I'm not saying anything. But I'm simply setting a certain rule uh, that God has set in his word. For example, when Jesus came after preaching the uh, Sermon on the Mount, uh, a, a, a leper came to him and he put a question uh, on the Lord. He asked him a question. Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me. The Lord gave a very simple answer. I am willing, be healed. So God's people, he is willing. And if there is any one of us who has got a little bit of fear, uh, because of this corona or uh, this pandemic or any other disease. Fear not, because God is with you. Fear not, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of uh, power and love and of sound mind. Sometimes mind makes diseases. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I believe we can choose to live under the shadow of the Almighty. I believe we can choose and that no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. It is possible. But if it comes, I tell you, I'm simply saying to you, no condemnation. No condemnation. The main thing is that you are in the hand of the Lord. main thing is even you die in sickness. If you are a child of God, you will end up in the presence of God. No problem. But I tell you, it is God's will for us to be healthy. It's God's will. So what, what I, I was thinking about sharing with you is God is at work. God is at work. We have shared a few things, and, but the sermon is very simple. What is God doing? What is God doing? I personally believe that he is building people. He is building people. Man only builds the Tower of Babel. Man only can produce Ishmael. Our God is a God who wants to live in us. I tell you, this must be remembered all the time. And from the very beginning, the placing of the spirit in man before he sinned, placing of the spirit in man simply meant God wanted to be one with man. God wanted to live in man. And when you read the scripture clearly, and I want your attention very quickly to one of the scripture that in the, in the beginning God wanted 
to be one with man. And in the end, we read the same things that God dwells among men. God wants to dwell among them. And actually, not only among them, I believe, he wants to live in us. He wants to live in our spirit. And that is declared in the scripture so clearly. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17 is so obvious. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. One spirit with him is awesome thought in itself. One spirit with him. He is one spirit with him. And then here it says, Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, And they heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And again, the same word is used when Jesus came and the apostle John says he tabernacled among us. He lived among us. And then he declared that we saw his glory as the glory of the only begotten of son, because only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. But this is a great, uh, great, wonderful word for me and for all of us who are hearing. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them. God wants to dwell with human beings. God wants to fill us with his presence. That is why we choose to live the life of Christ. We don't want to live our own life. We want to choose to live the life of Christ. Another thing, I, you know, these were the thoughts that were coming to me. That was, that was what I was thinking. I was thinking of how can we enjoy the faith of Christ? Because our faith does not sometimes work. How can we enjoy the faith of Christ? How can we have the wonderful faith of Christ? And uh, I want to uh, direct your attention to this passage uh, regarding this question. Who doesn't want the faith of Christ? Our faith doesn't work sometimes. Sometimes we pray and nothing happens. Sometimes we want to demand something and it doesn't happen. But how can I have the faith of Christ? My faith sometimes doesn't work. And most of the time, I desire the faith of Christ Jesus because his, his faith is a wonder-working faith. His faith never failed. He never failed in he he healing any sick person. He always healed them, and he did marvelous work in nature. He spoke to a storm, and the storm was still. When the disciple asked him, Lord, this fig tree is dried up. Jesus said, if you have got faith like a mustard seed, you can see to this tree. I say to this tree, be, be pulled out and be planted somewhere else. It will be done. Everything is possible with faith. And how can we enjoy the faith of our Lord Jesus? That is the question. And the answer is found so beautifully in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. That is the only way we can enjoy the faith of Christ. It comes with a price. It may look big price, but actually it is a simple and simple price uh, that will set you also free from a terrible enemy. And that enemy's name is self. Self is a greater enemy than the devil. Self brought the Lucifer to a place of Satan. He brought Lucifer to the place of, of devil. He lost his powerful place, a place of great significance because of self. And here in verse 20, you choose to lose yourself. You choose to lose your identity. You choose to live by the ident identity of another. You choose to live by the life of another. But for that, God's people, let me say it strongly and clearly. 
one has to say goodbye to their soulish life. One has to say goodbye to their self-life, self-assertion, self-important, and anything that you can put before self, if one can be willing, and then he in reality loses self, or I would say another way, it is the cross, that's the price. And it looks, looks a great price, uh, but I tell you, if I can be free of self, I can be free of everybody. I can be free of everybody. Nobody can disturb me. Nobody can offend me. I tell you, I guarantee when I will be free from self, that is the greatest freedom. And the freedom from self is the cross. Cross work wonders. Not bearing the cross, but if you think I want to bear the cross, I would simply say, that's all right. As long as you remember that you are wearing a sign of execution and you remember that I am executed. When Jesus died, I died with him. He rose again and I believe he left me in the tomb. Then I live his risen life. But this is the price. This is the price to have the faith of Christ, faith to be healed, faith to be delivered, faith to be fruitful, faith to live a victorious life, faith to live the life of more than conqueror. When you are not living and Christ is living in you, that is more than conqueror. That makes you more than conqueror. So we are not simply conqueror, because of losing our life, because of losing our self-life, we gain his life. And then we begin to live his life. And self, I tell you God's people, self is not like demon that one could drive them out. Self does not go out. You try to, try to suppress self, it will come greater. I guarantee you that. Try on your own to suppress self it will come before you in a greater degree. Only cross is the answer. Only cross is the answer. That's why Paul says that I am crucified to the world and the world is crucified to me. That seems big price, but that is, I tell you, God's people, a great comfort, a great joy and a great peace. I am crucified. This is the solution to receiving the faith of Christ. And I tell you, in the troubled time that are ahead, I believe we need to apply the Christ into our self-life and then walk in the faith of Christ Jesus. Of course, faith of Christ is the founder and he's the founder, Christ Jesus is the founder and finisher of our faith. He is everything for us. So Paul says in his testimony, and we need to have this testimony uh, to the glory of God. And I tell you, it looks like losing everything. I tell you, it is gaining something that nobody can give you. No religious uh, ritual can do it. No fasting can do it. No praying can do it. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I do not live. Nevertheless. I live, I don't live in other words, I do not live. I have chosen to say goodbye to my self-life. I've chosen to say no to my soulish life. That is the life we were born in Adam. Adam must go, Adam must leave. And this new establishment of the kingdom of God must flourish. Yet not I, yet not I. It's, it looks big price, but I tell you, it is the only way to come to a peace and joy that is called the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God, according to the word of God, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I live, nevertheless I live, yet not I. Well, I'm living. Of course, um, you can see me living. Uh, and I'm walking in this flesh, in this body, 
that is made up of flesh is, uh, and is going to be changed because flesh and blood will not enter into the kingdom of God. Do you know that? If you're hearing and you are follower of your great religion or great philosophy or whatever, I tell you, if you want to go to heaven, flesh and blood will not be there. What do you mean then you say? You must be born again. You must be born anew. You must be born from above. Because Jesus said he was born of flesh is flesh. And he was born of spirit is spirit. So Paul says here there is a price. You can have the faith of Christ. You can operate in the face of faith of Christ. You can do marvelous things that he did. And he said greater things. Uh, you read only in Gospel of John 14, verse 12. Greater things. How do the greater things happen? With the faith of Jesus. With the life of Jesus. But this is the pride. But Christ lives in me. I don't live anymore. And I tell you, he means what he says. And I believe he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. I believe the message is not only for Apostle Paul. It's not going to be only his testimony. Anyone who wants to have the faith of Christ must have this testimony. And the life which I now live, well, that's a very clear as well. But I don't know why it's not emphasized in the churches. Why? Why people are not taught this? Why you don't speak it over and over again here? And the life which I now live, he says, as I follow the Lord, you follow me. He says. He had, this, uh, he had this confidence in him because he was so close to the Lord. Nevertheless, uh, you know, he says here, and the life which I now live, I'm living the life, I'm going from place to place, and uh, wherever he was going, I tell you, he was having a bad time. According to the worldly system, everywhere he would go, I think if they, we will go uh, by the jail, he would say, well, keep a place for me. I'm coming to this jail soon. And he would. And uh, the way he was smitten or beaten, I tell you, he saw something in heaven. He saw something on the road of De go to Damascus that he was willing to sacrifice everything. That's what my challenge for me today is. That is what the challenge is for each and every one of us. Nevertheless, uh, he says, life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's where you get the faith. Can you see? Well, I don't need to labor to explain this. It is explained so beautifully and is simple, simple sentence. Very simple. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Some translations say, uh, I live by, uh, through the faith of the Son of God, but the the Greek simply says, this simple sentence, I live by the faith of the Son of God, Son of God who loves me, who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for me so that I will be joined to him for all eternity. He gave himself for me so that I will choose to give myself completely and be joined to him. And then rejoice in his faith. God's people, no one in Christianity has to struggle for his faith. Struggle, our struggle is with the self. And self is not like demons that you can drive out. No, no. Self can only be dealt with, with the life of Christ. And self can only be your resolve your decision, and you yourself, you simply say, I am not going to pass this way. I am not going to go to this place. Too much is at stake. I am going to enjoy the little life I have got in this life. I'm going to enjoy the faith of Christ. God's people, is, uh, God, uh, God, God speaks to us all, and I believe the Lord, 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 Impressed on my heart very strongly. Tell my people, you need my faith. Your faith may not work in the days to come. They will be difficult days. They may be tough days. But I tell you all, 
tell you all, and those who are hearing and the recording, I'm telling you, I'm pleading with you, get rid of your self-life. Get rid of, be, be, be free from the self-consciousness. Be free to, uh, free to assert the self everywhere. Live for this faith of Christ. Exercise this faith. It is very possible, absolutely possible. Uh, it's in simple terms, not I live. It is I that must be crucified. And I'm not saying you should not wear the cross. You can wear the cross, but remember, this is a sign of execution. And this is a sign I must be crucified. I was crucified with him. I am dead as long as far as the world is concerned. God's people, this simple message I brought to you. I spoken about many things. We spoke about sickness. And uh, we came to this conclusion that you can be free and be a testimony to the glory of God. But if sickness comes, if it attacks, it's good to give attention to the Lord. Say, so, Lord, I'm your child. I'm your beloved. What are you trying to say? I'm willing to listen to you. And he will let you. And uh, if this message have got any question, please get in touch with us. Let's pray. And praise God for the wonderful things he's going to do in the days to come. That is his plan. That is his purpose. We are privileged to live in this world for just temporarily. We are sojourner. We are, we are on our way to our, to our city. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are simply for our time being here. And thank God that we have been allowed to live in these exciting times. Exciting things are going to happen. I say tough time, but at the same time, those who will have the faith of Christ, because they have chosen to crucify be crucified with the Lord, not to live their own life. They will walk in the faith of the Lord. There is no Goliath that can, that can stand before this faith. There is no mountain, small and great, that can stand before this faith of the Son of the living God. Lord, we thank you for this simple word. Lord, your word is simple. Your Father, you do not speak enigma to us. You do not speak uh, even in parable to us anymore. You speak to us so clearly and loudly. So, Lord, we pray that this day will be a different day. It will be a day of defining our moment in which we define to choose cross. Cross is the answer to self-life, Lord, and we choose to bear it, not to wear it simply. To the glory of God, Lord, those who have heard and who do not know the meaning of the cross yet, we pray that you will open the eyes of those people. Lord, we thank you for this word. We put the seal of the Holy Spirit on us, it, on this word. In the name of our Lord Jesus, be glorified. We pray in, in his name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.